Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Now, most of you probably have a fairly good understanding how we hypertrophy muscles. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of the muscle, okay? Uh, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. There's actually two kinds of hypertrophy, and we're going to be differentiating those. There's also a process called hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is defined as an increase in the number of skeletal muscle fibers, also called skeletal muscle cells, per fascicle. Okay? Basically what that means is that in order for the muscle to grow via hyperplasia, these cells have to divide and we get more muscle cells. So that means more muscle fibers. Okay? This is not the primary mechanism where we get muscle growth. So when you go to the gym and perform resistance training, hyperplasia either contributes really nothing to your muscle growth or very, very little, okay? This is not the mechanism we see. There are other mammals where it's a little bit more common or it has a little greater contribution like rats and other rodents, but again, not in humans, okay? Not the major source of muscle growth. Now, that's not to say it can't happen. Um, it's actually been demonstrated that in extremely high intensity resistance training programs, you can actually get some hyperplasia. Again, it's not the major contributor to muscle growth, but it does occur. Also, individuals who cheat with anabolic steroids uh, can actually demonstrate some hyperplasia as well. Obviously, that's not a normal biological response, and they're going to see elevated levels of hyperplasia over an average person who's just doing a simple high intensity resistance training program. Okay. Um, if you're doing a more moderate or low intensity resistance training program, you shouldn't expect to really see any hyperplasia. Any growth that you see there is going to be due to hypertrophy, which brings up the question, what is hypertrophy? Well, most of us, like I said, probably have a pretty good understanding of it. It's an increase in the size of pre-existing skeletal muscle fibers. So you're not getting cell division here. You're not multiplying the number of muscle fibers. Instead, you're taking what you already have and they're just getting bigger. Okay. This is the same concept we see in adipose cells, adipocytes. You have the same number of fat cells roughly that you did when you were a kid. Okay. The only thing that the fat cells do is they either get bigger or they shrink. Okay. Same concept there. So it's an increase in the size of what you already have. However, there's two ways that muscles can hypertrophy. And an interesting thing that we'll lead to in one of the next videos is actually that this not only applies to skeletal muscle, but it also applies to cardiac muscle and maybe even some cardiac adaptations or some pathologies. The two types of hypertrophy are myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Okay? They're hypertrophy of different things within the muscle. So let's think about the components that we have in a muscle. Okay? We obviously have cytoplasm, okay, more specifically called sarcoplasm in the context of skeletal muscle. And of course, the sarcoplasm has nuclei. Okay? It has endoplasmic reticulum. It's got Golgi apparatus, okay? ribosomes, all sorts of things inside the cytoplasm. And then it has the contractile units, the sarcomeres, the proteins. It's got actin, myosin, tropomyosin, troponin. It's got titan. All of those components of the sarcomeres. And so more or less when we say proteins, uh, we can really just sum this up by saying the sarcomeres. Okay. So if I do what's called myofibrillar hypertrophy, this is really just an increase in the number of sarcomeres at a constant sarcoplasmic volume, okay? In other words, if we had 100% myofibrillar hypertrophy, the actual cytoplasmic or sarcoplasmic volume would remain unchanged. It would not increase and it would not decrease. Instead, we would actually just add sarcomeres. And I'm gonna explain this in the following video, but it's actually a setup called sarcomeres in parallel, okay? There's two ways you can actually add sarcomeres in series and in parallel. And join us in the next video when we talk about that. But the point is now you're just adding sarcomeres and you're not changing the volume of the cell. So if this is our baseline muscle fiber right here, we're looking at a cross section right here, and each of these red dots right here represents sarcomeres, okay? If we undergo myofibrillar hypertrophy, we'd end up with a system like this, okay? Notice here I've gone from four sarcomeres, not that we have four, but I've gone from four to basically nine right here. And again, the volume of the cell did not increase. Okay, this is the same circle that I've got right here. 
So we don't have any more sarcoplasm, we just increase the number of sarcomeres here in parallel. Okay? Remember what sarcomeres do. Okay? They increase the contraction force of the muscle, or left, that's one thing they can do. And so if you want to be able to generate more force, meaning you want more strength, then you're going to need more sarcomeres, and they're generally added in parallel for increases in force. That's myofibrillar hypertrophy. Okay? Now the second kind of hypertrophy you can get is what's called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Okay? This is an increase in the sarcoplasmic volume with a constant sarcomere count. So if you had 100% sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, you would get something like this over here. Notice the number of sarcomeres here didn't change, right? But the cell now is much bigger. It's increased in diameter, okay? This is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, okay? Um, and anything that comes with the cytoplasm, uh, you would actually have more of that as well. Um, one th interesting thing about skeletal muscle is it's multinucleated. So the bigger a muscle cell is, the more nuclei it's gonna have. Um, and actually there was a study done uh, several years ago where they actually looked at the size of the skeletal muscle cell relative to the number of myonuclei that it had, which are just skeletal muscle nuclei. And what they found is there's a pretty strong correlation between the size of the muscle and the number of nuclei that it has. So when I say cytoplasm, usually that doesn't refer to nuclei, but in this case it does. Nuclei, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatuses, ribosomes, lysosomes, any of those things that are just free floating other than the sarcomeres those are all going to increase, okay? Now, generally speaking, the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is what people are gonna want if they're bodybuilders and they're looking to do competitions because the muscles themselves are gonna be bigger. But what's important to understand about this is that just because you have bigger muscles does not mean you are stronger. And that's because of something called muscle quality. We've got different things like muscle endurance, muscle power, muscle strength, even muscle size, but there's what we call muscle quality. You can have two muscles that are exactly the same size and one of them can generate more force, it's stronger. And that would probably be because it has more sarcomeres in parallel, it has more myofibular hypertrophy. So a muscle that has more sarcomeres in parallel per unit volume would have higher muscle quality and probably generate more strength than a muscle, even if it's bigger, that has a lower number of sarcomeres in parallel. Okay. Now, the important thing to understand here is it's not an all or none phenomenon generally. Okay? You're not going to have one of these in isolation of the other, meaning you're not going to have 100% myofibrillar hypertrophy and 0% sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, or vice versa. It's not going to be 100% and 0. It's going to be a mixture of the two. However, generally speaking, if we're doing heavy load resistance training, so lower repetitions, higher weight, so there we're doing like strength and power, we're gonna to tend to favor myofibrillar hypertrophy. If we start doing endurance resistance training or even hypertrophy training, which is where you're anywhere between about six and 12 repetitions, with that you're doing more repetitions, but you're doing a slightly lower load, and you may get a little bit more sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So depending on the type of training you're doing, um, you can actually uh, focus on one of these more so than the other. However, you cannot do one in isolation of the other. They occur together. This figure right here makes it seem like they're in isolation, but then again, nothing in physiology is ever in isolation, is it? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of hyperplasia and how it really doesn't contribute very much to muscle growth, and then the two types of hypertrophy that we have. In the next video, we're gonna explore the concepts of sarcomeres in parallel and sarcomeres in series. So join us then. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.